his hairstyle to another. I think we're going to get the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Ricky Jutley. The hair. The hair, yes. Just Can we just get the hair? <laughs> um, we could try, but maybe lack of vocals as well. Yeah, there you go. He's purely here for Ricky's hair. I'm just standing <laughs> in the background. Oh, it looks really bad as well. Sorry about that, guys. It yeah. looks bad. We yes. have got a little bit of glare going on. But, uh, <laughs> welcome to British Con. Thank you. Awesome. It's really good to be here. I, I walked in and everyone was really, really friendly, yeah, saying hi straight okay. away. And it was really, really, really cool. Um, I can't remember. If, no, I didn't go last year. I didn't get a chance to. Yeah. I think I was just working on um, some release work. So really cool to get to get a chance to do it this time. Uh, are you enjoying yourself? Yes. Um, walked in, met a fair few guys. Um, got Luke Presley there giving me um, a very friendly <laughs> gesture. <laughs> friendly gesture. <laughs> You'll see that later if uh, we film that kind of stuff as well. But, um, no, it's been really, really cool. Um, I know that we had the AC little tournament on the side there. I think they came across a few bugs. Um, and yeah, it's just been really, really good seeing everyone. Um, and I hadn't seen the, uh, the first panel, but I believe the second panel is starting pretty soon, actually. Yeah. Second yeah. Match in the second round. Oh, there you go. Uh, that, that's a dog fight. Isn't it? That's a dog fight. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, yeah It's not yeah. the panel. No, the, so everything got a little bit delayed because we had oh, technical okay. issues. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're all aware of them sort of things. All aware, <laughs> all try and work through them. Just exactly. We, do we get, kept cool. plugging at it and got through it eventually. So that's yes, good. that's good. So I've got a question for you. Yes, go for it. So you may not be able to answer this. Mm. But of course you can. Will we? get an update of the Jutley because obviously <laughs> you know like the real world version I is I told uh, you this is what everyone cares about. It, it is it is the Jutley seems a bit like uh, less than what what we should be getting you know so mm, okay. I'm sure Shaq can agree right? so you know what when I saw um, I didn't even know about the Ricky until um, you know we put it in and that they, they actually renamed um, right. before he actually went out and I was talking to Sean Tracy mm. a technical director and a few of the other actual um, tech artists and the guys and Josh Herman um, and they mentioned, um, hey, this is the look that you had probably a year and a bit ago right. so when they put it in. Um, and then I talked to Sean, I said, volume. Yeah. <laughs> volume. <laughs> and, um, perfect my hairstyle. Just in case. Yeah, there's there you one, go. one request yeah. for Moises, yeah. he does that's want it. some that's blue. Well, I, I mean, that's beautiful, though. So <laughs> um, but no, and I, I did say um, to Sean, can we think about that? And then um, only actually, I think Thursday, he posted me um, the meme and stuff, and I, I wasn't aware of it. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is pretty damn cool. Um, that's how you know you've made it in the I was just about to say, yeah, this is pretty much, you've got to make it as a day. If you're, a, a, meme, you, yeah, if you're yeah. a meme, it means something, apparently. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I, I, I did say to him, well, maybe we could do a V2. And so a I'd Ricky like to see a V2. Yeah. Why not? Why like not? a bit of a retro one. Uh, keep there going as it gets yeah. bigger and bigger. Really more and more more. Is it going to well. just keep going and going? So. <laughs> um, I don't know if reality can handle with it, but maybe in game, <laughs> maybe in game we could be. Yeah, so we'll have to yeah. see. <laughs> Are we going to get crazy colours like that? I think so. I think the plan is to definitely get crazy colours. And to be honest, um, come on board. Let's show you the amazingness. Yeah, we've got to have these two hairs next to each other. So that's, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is. I mean, the volume's cool. He's got very clean. Very like to see that in game for sure. It doesn't take much effort. It doesn't really. <laughs> your hair looks like um, it. Yeah, it chat has does. asked how you do your hair. I mean, uh, have they asked? You. Yeah. Oh man, am I really going to say this? I mean, it's, it's well, embarrassing. Well, Should well, I do, do it? it. Yeah, do it because oh, I mean, right, Brian right, had the whole <laughs> thing about how he did his hair. Oh, so oh, oh sir, it, Brian was legit. Okay, right. Um, I'll start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you lied to me, aren't you? Of course not. Does this face look like it lies? Okay, so. After shower, it probably dries a bit, and then a bit of sea salt spray, um, and then blow dry it for maybe three to five minutes, maybe five minutes, <laughs> and then a bit of a kind of um, it's a bit of a wax or a bit of putty, and that's about it. It's not actually. What's really the embarrassing intense. bits that you missed out, like the hair curlers and things? Um, no, the embarrassing <laughs> bits is um, I said three to five minutes, but maybe it takes longer. Than yeah, I, I was wondering <laughs> that when you you kind of looked like you were debating three, five, maybe what should five. should I actually say? Could be know. ten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the key to truly procedural hair there. That, wow, that's quite the way to put it, to be honest. <laughs> Procedural hair, biome just living yeah. in the hair as well. We'll get some voids in there one time as well. So what's next for the Ricky? I mean, uh, like, of course, it was different last year. Well, I said, let's do a V2 mm. is the first thing. And then um, I think, um, what if I just went completely bald? What if I did that? Ooh. What would happen? Ooh. That's a big move. I think, I think Star Citizen would break. <laughs> it would break, yeah. Something would is break. Is it going to be a way game. you can get, like, a space helmet that just, like, is 
cut into your oh, hair because it'll be seen. <laughs> yeah, like what if just... it had like several holes and then it could just like? I mean, we've already got that at the moment, haven't we? Really? Well, <laughs> that's, that's just, why I want to just keep it. it as a feature. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You see, I don't know if you've seen some like motorcycle helmets where they have like their hair yes. stuck in it. Yeah, you can just do that. I could we just have yeah. hair sticking out of helmets at the moment, don't we? Yeah, so well, so I mean, just keep it yeah. as a feature. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so what do you do for CIG? Um, I am a game tape programmer. I work on the IFCS flight control stuff. <gasps> oh my god, it's him. <laughs> it's it's all down it, yeah. to him. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much me at the moment. And how is the flight control system at the moment? Um, <laughs> a headache? Or? Uh, what's in the game at the moment is a headache, uh, but we're really working much, yeah. a lot to make it a lot better. Um, it's probably going to take a, like, it's a pretty complicated system, right? Um, and we sort of need it to scale to having, say, 60 ships in the game, which is pretty, pretty hard to do. And so we're working a lot on, like, longer term improvements so that it it'll scale, right? And we don't, we won't lose as much, like, we want to keep it as it is, um, but also be able to go bigger. Yeah. Because um, I think currently, like, when we first wrote it, it was pretty much Arena Commander that it was written for. Yeah. And yeah. at the time, I don't think we even had uh, procedural planets, and we didn't have nearly as many players and servers as we do now. Um, so it's that challenge to, like... Has it been a lot harder to go from, like, programming stuff for Arena Commander, because that was, like, your test bed for everything, to then changing and testing there's it so many the like situations that you just forget about in the PU um, <laughs> like yeah. generally um, like QA is the last line before it's players right and even then players find so many situations that I'm like we're, we're good at it <laughs> no definitely I mean like I didn't even know. think this would be a thing you could do well there's so much in the physics code there that obviously relates to the work that you're working on as well so you yeah. know Dave will collaborate with so many different members of the team for yeah. such an important feature of the game and um, just like he mentioned there you know you you can start with a very controlled test bed in Arena Commander and you know it's just a very simple open space with a certain amount of radius and um, yeah. when you go into the PU then all of a sudden it's just it changes everything because there's different physics grids involved there's different you know world spaces yep. and it changes um, just everything and then the chips as well just you know variation of what a single se um, general kind of combat fighter can do um, compared to you know one of the huge I mean that's got to be quite hard well. to balance getting the flight controls to work on something small and nimble to then big massive yeah. ships that shouldn't be moving like that yeah um, and there's so much like finesse to it I, it like it's a mechanic that or like I guess a main feature of the game right that so many people care about that they really pay attention to those little details more yeah. so than in other parts of the game um, and so there's like very little room to get it wrong <laughs> it's a high there's, thing there's very little there's very little um, like you could make a tiny mistake that you don't even think about and then yeah. it gets into the hands of players and they're like, this is shit or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, paraphrasing, right? But <laughs> yeah. um, no, that's what most people have. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's hard to get right. And it's hard to get it right so that enough, like as many, as many people as possible like it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, it's gonna play into like desires of different players. Yeah, exactly. So some players really want it to be like yeah, racing, how they want it to feel as well. So it's not yeah, just balancing yeah. yourself; it's balancing how people think that it should be feeling. When and that's the it. thing with the iteration as well. That's that's why we have obviously the Vicardi and then the PTU because every time we get that, then every time we do a release on top of it or we're midway in a release, then the feedback obviously comes. It goes to Chris, it goes to a few others, and then you know Dave can take a look at that with Andrew Nicholson, one of our you know um, technical designers who balances with him as well. So. I think that's the important thing that we keep getting the feedback from you guys, which yeah. is important. And you get a lot of changes from the so your own test bed that you just yes. set up the QA, but then when it goes live as well, it, you seem to have things. It's like well, this never happened to us. And yeah, you, exactly. We just get lots of comments. Yeah. This never happened. Why is it happening? Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and, so, and it's really good taking different opinions on that. So, what's been the biggest challenge then with the IFCS? I mean, like not maybe not necessarily like uh, presently, but you've been working here for how long now? Uh, nine months. Right. And what's been the, the biggest challenge for you and that you can tell us about, like in the whole like balancing um, of IFCS and everything else you've done? So there's so much that controls how ships fly mm. that very subtle things can make it wrong. Um, and sometimes you get like reports that, you know, this doesn't feel right or something, but it's super hard to pin down what that is that's wrong. Um, and there's so much that you need to like, if you've got like, hundreds of variables that are all controlling how ships fly. Right. It could be any one of them, but usually it's a combination of things that you just didn't think about. Yeah, not just so, one key thing. Um, so just how supple are these variables then? Well, like, like I've had bugs where, uh, like, 
apparently there was one time where QA were flying into planets mm. and uh, everything was fine, no problems. You fly into a planet's atmosphere and you turn and the ship would just start rolling. And you're like, <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> How do I even approach this? Yeah. Hey, yeah There's yeah. so many things that could be wrong. Um, and you have to like really carefully, like we're putting a lot of effort into the moment into making new tools uh, to like visually like see what ships are doing yeah. the, uh, while you're flying them and stuff. The feedback stuff that you said you was uh, so like, when you're doing the stress test like on the PU uh, at the test server the other day, like we're logging everything, yeah. uh, so you get more feedback and things. So yeah. that you find that helps a lot more to yeah, pinpoint those errors. Um, yeah, absolutely. We got we also got fairly new tools that let you like on the fly edit ships how fly, right? Like how they fly. So. If, so you can, like previously we couldn't do this, we can now, is you would have like a ship flying around in the game and designers can like tune its handling and it'll just change how it's flying while it's flying. Um, and that really helps us like yeah, work imagine. through handling like that. We haven't previously been able to do that. So speaking of handling and stuff, I mean like, so this game is very realistic in terms of what it tries to do and what it tries to get out and give to the player. Like yep. there's a lot of immersion and stuff going into it. Um, so. But the, the issue is, like, with some players, like, flying a ship and stuff, things like inertia can, like, cause things like motion sickness and stuff. Yep. What, what sort of, like, considerations have you put into it to, like, uh, I guess, uh, have you had any considerations for players like that? And if so, can you give us any inferences on the kind of stuff that you're trying to think about to m maybe make the game a bit easier for them? Or is it kind of a, a, a thing like, well, maybe it's not a game for them? It's a really hard question to answer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I think, oh, that is pretty hard. Um, pretty much, uh, we don't, it's, it's really hard to design like that from the start. So it's, it's much easier to like do it the sort of most obvious way first and then right. test it with people who are gonna have like motion sickness problems mm. and try and figure out what's actually like the problem for them yeah because I don't get motion six right so it's very hard for me to, to be like oh this is gonna cause motion six because that could be way off right you know I mean so it's much easier to actually have someone who has that issue play it and then figure out from them if it's maybe like sometimes it's the disconnect from the, the camera of the player and the ship's movement and stuff yeah um, and so we can like maybe put a setting in to turn that off or like it's easier to sort of see what see how it's affecting players then to try and predict how it will affect Yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of different things that can affect people and, and lots of different ways. So like you said, that you can't plan for every eventuality. No. So in some ways it is easier to get, like push it out, they get that feedback and then tweak yeah. it that way. Basically. No, I totally agree. I think um, Dave had on the point where it's sometimes if we can't, we don't, if we don't have motion sickness, we don't get that, then it's difficult to just can't think just understand right away. It, yeah. However, though, I think that when we put an initial iteration out, those considerations are thought about and you know we try and think well are there, is there something very obvious there um, yeah. and when the obvious things are very apparent then we'll try and address those and then there'll be a further stage of then well let's get someone that maybe has motion sickness and then yeah. you know have that kind of test bed with those guys so that's how we get the feedback sounds like a sound way of doing it really i think it usually ends up better in terms of like complexity in the game if you're not trying to add a whole bunch of like, features to account for stuff that may not be that big of a problem. Right? Yes, yeah. So you're making a lot more work for yourself that exactly. may not turn out to be... I easy. mean, you'll always get edge cases in any um, kind of system, and that's why you, you try and polish those out and completely, like, well, try to eliminate them where you can. But I think you can only probably cover a general area of that, maybe, like, 60 to 80%, and then yeah. the, the last 20 that you're trying to polish it out and try and roll it out, and that's when you get a bit more with the focus testing and obviously with those groups of trying to make sure that you account for even more extreme edge cases afterwards. How have you found like um, having the, uh, the Delta patcher now that you can put out these little hot fixes and that you found that being a lot more useful for oh, to yeah. feedback and testing? Really yeah. yeah. well, yeah. I was going to say, how have you found it? Because that's <laughs> it's the, amazing. That's yeah. thing, right? I mean, I, I've been doing Evocati testing, so yeah. I know what it's like to download about three builds a day as well. Yeah. So yeah, having the thing where you can just patch a little bit has been a huge It, it was very for important us. for us. And you know, um, I know that the guys actually putting the systems together and actually the build guys actually um, plug that in at the moment. Um, when they had other priorities and we wanted to be able to get builds in and 
other things on their backlog on their roadmap it was like well no we've got to focus on this and you know um, eventually getting it out we've, we've seen the benefits out of it you know when you, you go home and you just click a button and the change and the difference such an important thing very nice simplistic feature as well so I'm glad that we're there now yeah, so good. would you say there's a bit less pressure now for non feature specific things to, to kind of get them out you know like uh, at 100%, because right now we uh, we have uh, I think 3.1.3 and 3.1.2, and we're trying to get to the bottom of a whole bunch of like performance issues. I mean, like um, I'm not trying to ask a difficult question, but like I'm just uh, okay. <laughs> go for it. However you yeah. want to ask it. Well. <laughs> but like, is there like less pressure to get it perfect the first time? Because obviously you, you know you'd have to wait a long more, time. Is it a relief to, to have it in basically? Well, I think you can always obviously decide to patch um, where you need to, and mm. I, I would say that um, the real major issues there'll be smaller patches um, and well, that's what we can use now and obviously before well it would be a bit longer and you'd have to go through it but the benefit is is that it'll be a better patch I think now I wouldn't say it's um, less pressure but it's more enjoyment and, yeah. and, it, it, and that's the big thing it's kind of we can make this iterative cycle every time right. we can do these little point patches every time um, and we can still make decisions if we want to do a larger patch and you know a smaller patch um, but it is very beneficial right now. I also presume that if by doing the smaller patches as well, like, you know, when you save the patches up and we had big patches, like you said, once it got out to live, we, you'd notice things that were going wrong that weren't doing it before. So now when you're doing a smaller patch, it might not break so much, or at least you can kind of roll those back as well, rather than, you know, having that big issue of, oh, we've just done a massive patch, it's going to take ages before we come around to fixing that again. Or no, I totally understand that. Like, um, you know, one of the things that we all see is a diff between change lists, i.e., you know, if you're looking within something like Perforce and you see that a, new, a huge amount of changes between things and you only want to include a certain yeah, few just because little bit. <laughs> it's just, I just want that little one but if you're doing you know a bigger patch or if you didn't have the delta patching sometimes you're going with a few more different uh, changes and stuff and so you know the control that you have with being able to put out exactly what you want um, is a lot better sure so I have a bit of a less technical question Go for it. <laughs> um, so in terms of the game and the project in general what are you what, what are you guys looking forward to the most in terms of let's say I, I don't know if you guys are like gamers I mean like you don't have to be a gamer to work on games but what yeah. are you looking forward to the most you know like uh, what excites you the most about the project in terms of things that you would see yourself doing when the game is out like exploration that kind of thing I think for me um, personally it would be to have a career within the game. I think, like, um, for me, um, I've always loved games, and I think a really important thing is kind of you can go finish work and then you can come home and you can then switch on a game and you can be totally immersed in something like people immersed in God of War right now and, you know, a big, big change of what that game represents. And I think that with this game, I want to be able to log in, I want to be able to have that persistence to say, okay, well, I'm going to wake up and choose who I am and have a career of what I'm going to be doing, whether or not I'm a really kick-ass pilot or, or, you know, maybe I'm a captain of the fleet or something and with my org and stuff. And I think having a role in the game um, that is always persistent and continuing, so I'm, I'm building myself over time, yeah. is very important. So I think that's, that's the thing that I'm looking more to excited to, is playing the game with multiple people and um, seeing where that evolves. Like, Coming off of that, I think the thing that's really important for me is this idea of like ship persistence, that you're not having throwaway ships, right? That right. This is a ship that's yours, and you're going to play with it for a long time, and then we're working toward having like uh, ships that sort of get worn and maybe they won't be as reliable and you'll have to like repair them on the go and keeping your ship for like weeks and weeks at a time and really growing really attached to it is something that really excites me because it's it's so much more different to like like in arena commander you you tend to make a lot of really big risks with your yeah, ship yeah. Um, and it's it's like I think it's one of our biggest challenges in design is trying to find that balance between punishing you for losing your ship but also making you want to not lose your ship, do you know what I mean? Yeah, because right. at the moment it's kind of, it's even though people try to do the kind of persistence things, it's, it's, the ships are still very much throw away, um, and, and obviously with the bugs and lag and things, sometimes like your ships crash and burn and things like that, so it's, uh, it's it'd be nice when we can go over to, you know, like you said, actually feeling like your ship is your ship, yes. and it's going to be the same one that you pull out each time, and uh, with the damage persistence and things like that as well, so it's like, that, that is yeah, my ship, that, because that the engine's in, missing. <laughs> it fits in with Ricky's, like, career idea, right, that your, your career is going to be over the course of, like, certain ships yeah and that ship is like a section of your career like it's like like you're doing your career and you have a job right and you're doing your career in the game and you have a ship that is going to be for some period of time that you yeah. go attached to and then you move on 
Um, and I really like that idea. I think that's quite exciting to play a game like that. Is there any like mechanics and things you look forward to working on that you maybe not doing that? So not, not the actual what you're going to play, but actually working on. So is there something oh, like mining coming up? What I look forward to working on something like that. I think for me, um, because we've obviously just mentioned it, with three two would be mining is exactly the one yeah. that I'm looking forward to. We have the really cool prototype right now, where obviously you being able to break apart minerals and have the extraction, um, and we've started to put together um, the visual prototype of it. But now the I really like our HUD um, to actually show this, the levels of extraction and what yeah. commodities are taking and what minerals are taking from that. Um, and I think that that is um, very different gameplay to what we've done previously in, right. in our different patches um, and different releases. So that's the one that I'm looking to really much in the short term for sure. I think. Yeah. Um, and watching it um, and working with the team really closely and um, Matt Lightfoot, um, who's actually here today, um, is producing that as well and just, um, you know, I'm always at the top of it but always, he's always telling me where the progress is. It's really exciting because, yeah, yeah. you know, you get to see all that really cool stuff and um, the aim is to deliver it in three too. So, in, in most other, like, MMOs and traditional games where you go ahead and you mine and you gather resources, mining is kind of a very passive thing. You find a node, you press a button and you get the resources, right? Well, I'm probably so an ATV, it seemed like maybe there'd be a bit more skill involved in making sure that you don't overcharge the rock and that kind of thing. So to what degree of kind of skill do you reckon that uh, mining will have? in the game. I think like, um, for 3-2 we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll do a first iteration which obviously as you saw and as you alluded to just there you'll, you'll be able to you know have an element of control mm. um, rather than just oh cool I've achieved something by pressing <laughs> a button and I'm done and I've got what I wanted. Right. Um, you know there's got to be a bit more um, challenge um, for that um, and I think 3-2 will touch upon that with what we have there um, but I think that there's different avenues that you can go to you know there's different I, I can imagine different devices that will able to decide how you want to be able to extract or how you want to detect minerals and how you want to detect them. Um, anything that's a real cool commodity as composed to something else and yeah. you know and maybe if someone's attacking you as well there's got to be variations of what you can do to extract things and um, how that's protected and how that's actually absorbed and stuff so there's there's quite a lot there um, that you can do um, and that we've been thinking about but I think the first iteration will be kind of what we saw originally. Yeah, more like um, a dangerous resource like dynamitanium or something that requires <laughs> well, a bit more finesse. Very nice name. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think <laughs> that one went <laughs> Done. Um, no, so um, and yeah, I think I think that would be a, a way to look at it as well because right. you know there's always high risk, high reward with anything that you decide to pick up. So mm. um, that'll be really cool for the gameplay. Okay. Cool. Right on. Sweet. Um, I want to see if there's a panel going on, but this is yeah. pretty cool. I'm, I'm kind of immersed in it now. <laughs> Stay, it's fine. Total immersion. <laughs> Take the rest over. <laughs> That's fine. No, it's been uh, great chatting to you. Thank you very much. Very good. Very good stuff. Very good, good to meet you. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.